so thankful to be here, and we're so thankful for the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts offering us this invitation to be able to dance for you this evening. A little bit about Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet. We started in 1955 in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and since then we've grown to be a school of over 292 students, and we're the only licensed uh, ballet school in the world to perform George Balanchine's The Nutcracker. We also perform other of George Balanchine works, including Western Symphony, Who Cares, Serenade, and we really hold uh, an esteem to these ballets because they, they're filled with excellence and beauty, and that's something that we strive for on a daily basis. The only requirement to enter into Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet is that you have to be willing to do the work. You have to work to be able to get anything that you deserve in life, and that, those are the core values that Marcia stands for, and they're running through our school on a daily basis. It's something that we also believe in, making sure that we're able to achieve those, those levels of excellence and honor George Balanchine himself. One of the links for our school and George Balanchine is our associate artistic director, Darla Hoover. Thank you, Nick. And thank you to each and every one of you for being here this evening, sharing a very special night for us. And thank you to the Kennedy Center for the invitation. We are honored, very honored. The, the dancers who are about to dance for you are extremely excited. They range in age from seven, no, I take that back. They range in age from 11 to 18. Um, I stand before you and I, I love to remind people that I think I'm the luckiest person in the world. I was raised and trained by Marcia Dale Weary until I was 15. So I literally went from the hands of Marcia Dale Weary to the hands of George Balanchine. For a dancer, it really doesn't get any better than that. I had the privilege of working with Mr. Balanchine until he passed away in 1983. In fact, I was taken into the company one year exactly after he received his prestigious Kennedy Center Award. So I had the wonderful opportunity of working under this gentle giant for many years and absorbing as much as I possibly could. I had the privilege of dancing in these theaters um, when we came uh, as a group of the New York City Ballet. I never thought in a million years that I would be standing here with our students sharing the same magnificent Kennedy Center with them. Uh, it's uh, more than a dream come true. So I love sharing the balance sheet ballets with the students. I love to see them grow from them. And I love to see how much they fall in love with dancing his work, just like I did. We're going to start this evening with he, for you with a pas de from Balanchine's Who Cares? We're starting the evening off with Embraceable You. Please enjoy.
Mr. Balanchine always did such a wonderful job at capturing the American spirit. I remember doing a tour with him not long after I had joined the New York City Ballet in 1980, and we went to Texas. We got off the plane. We all met for a party at a wonderful ranch. And in that short amount of time, Balanchine had gone to a store and managed to arrive in full Western gear at this party. And it was, uh, it was such a delightful evening. He really embraced everything that America had to offer. And yes, he was Russian, but he truly considered himself a true American. And I think you can see that in his choreography, Embraceable You. And now we segue into second movement from Balanchine's Western Symphony, another American classic. Thank you.
And now we would like to get you into the holiday spirit. Balanchine's The Nutcracker has been delighting sold out audiences since 1954. Actually, I find it interesting that when this ballet premiered, it premiered in February of 1954. Like, what was with that? I don't know. But it has been delighting us for, uh, how many years is that? I don't know, I can't do my math fast enough in my head, but that's a long time for uh, a ballet to last. And it lasts because he really got it right. He tells a story so beautifully, it's delightful, and it entertains anyone from two to 92, or probably 102. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, I'd love to show you what we're going to do for you tonight. It's, um, we're going to start you off with one of the highlights, really, from the party scene in Balanchine's Act One, and it is the soldier doll. Enjoy. told you it would get you into the holiday spirit. I think you're going to find the next dance surprising. Um, apparently, Balanchine choreographed many versions of what many of us call Arabian uh, at the New York City Ballet. For Balanchine's version, we call it coffee. He choreographed many versions, and actually the original, the very original in 1954, was a solo for a man, Francisco Monsignor. Um, he created many versions. I have a feeling you're going to see this tonight and probably have not seen this version before. So I'm delighted to show you a version that hasn't been seen for many, many years.
cool, right? Yeah. The next thing that we're going to dance from you is tea from Mr. Balance Sheen's The Nutcracker. This was one of the very first, if actually this, this is the first thing I danced with the New York City Ballet when I did The Nutcracker, the very first thing. And in those days, Mr. Balanchine would stand in the wing over there. In fact, they put a little ledge in the wing so he could rest his elbow on it because he often just stood with his elbow, his elbow like this and his little chin up and he'd watch, he'd watch us looking down like that. And it didn't make us nervous. In fact, it was very reassuring habit, having him in the wings until I did Chinese. And I'm not really good with props. So we come out, all is well, and I have a little fan in my hand, and I'm dancing, everything is great. And then you go to the box, and you are supposed to cast the magic spell. Two down, two up, three down, three whoop. And I hear that everyone told me that not only did I throw my fan and it landed in the most inconvenient spot on stage where no one could actually get to it to remove it, but that it had opened up <laughs> fully and caught the light. It was like a really dramatic effect. Um, that was my first introduction to Mr. Balanchine's Nutcracker with him standing there. I was a wreck. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be fired. It was only my first performance. But he was very gracious when things like that happened. Um, he was always very gracious and respectful and very kind to us. Um, the only thing that ever upset him is if he thought we weren't giving 200%. And he often would say, he, in fact, he said this before Nike coined it, and he would say, just do it. And, it, you know, he would, a lot of times he would say to us, what are you waiting for? It's now, do it now, you know. So that was the only thing that would ever frustrate him. So, you know, I thank you, Mr. Balanchine, for allowing me to be spastic and throwing my fan. Um, so I, we proceed forward with T. And um, just to put one little thought in your head, you'll understand as soon as you see this dance, sometimes very good things come in small packages. Well, <laughs> in case you were wondering what I said before, he was 11. The girls accompanying him were 12 and 13. Good things come in small packages, not just jewelry. Um, <laughs> so the next thing, I don't know if I should share with you, but I'm going to anyway. The next thing we're going to present to you is Marzipan and her shepherdesses. I could not stand dancing this role. I have to confess. It's a beautiful, beautiful dance to watch. But for me, I felt very constricted. I felt like I needed to be let out of my cage. And when you do the Nutcracker with the New York City Ballet, you're doing 54 performances in a row. So by, I would say, even number five performance, and I'm feeling like this, it made me insane. I do enjoy watching it, and the dancers dance it beautifully. But every time I see it, I get that little cringe going. But hopefully you don't.
We are going to finish off our presentation of excerpts from Mr. Balanchine's The Nutcracker with the Sugar Plum Fairy and her cavalier dancing the Grand Pas de Deux. Now this one I can tell you, I absolutely loved dancing. It's something I miss. I see them dance and I miss having that feeling and having that experience on stage. Um, it's a perfect marriage of exquisite music with exquisite choreography and we have Many things to thank Mr. Balanchine for, and this one's at the top of, I think, every ballerina's list. I think I've never heard of a ballerina not absolutely love dancing this role. So we are thrilled to show this to you tonight.
This concludes our dancing for this evening, but I would like to ask the company to come out and take a full company bow. I also know that the dancers and myself would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge someone, acknowledge someone extremely special for us. It's the whole reason we dance. We are here because of her and we dance for her. Marcia Dale Weary. And thank you again to each and every one of you for sharing this special evening with us. I hope that you had as good of a time as we did. Thank you, and have a wonderful holiday season.